Welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create conscious change all around the world. Now here's your Wickedly Smart host, Angel B. Hartwell. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate wickedly smart women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom, along with immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. This is your host, Angel B. Hartwell, and today we welcome our special guest, and I'm ringing the bell big time. Because our special guest is also somebody who discovered the show as a listener. Her name is Gina Casaza. Gina is a multi-talented individual who has ventured into different career paths. Her experiences include working in the film industry, performing as a stand-up comic, writing children's books, and running a self-care business. She has undergone unique and challenging experiences, such as training with a Navy SEAL, intentionally getting kidnapped, and losing hearing in her left ear at 21, only to regain a majority of her hearing 10 years later. Through her diverse experiences, Gina has developed a well-rounded perspective and a passion for storytelling, making her an engaging and inspiring individual. Welcome to the show, Gina. I'm excited you are here. Thanks for having me. Well, I want to, first of all, again, say thank you uh, for being a listener. I love that you're a listener. And before we came um, into this uh, time together, into the interview together, you were mentioning that you were looking for resources when you became a listener of the show. So I'm very excited that you're here and that you are now, as a result of receiving resources Mm -hmm. from the show and the guests who've been on before you, you're now here to be a resource as well, Gina. So that's awesome. So I want to start our time by asking you, do you have a sense of what caused you to be multi-talented? Do you have like a sense of when, when you were a child, did you have a whole bunch of interests or was it something that blossomed in you over time and kind of happened for you organically? When I was a child, I my parents put me in every activity under the sun. They wanted to have me just experience everything and see what I liked. And I was also a child that liked exploring And when I was committed to something, I was committed. And I'm not sure if that was just who I am or if that also is from my parents, because my parents always had this rule where when they put us in something, we had to stick it out until the very end. And then we were able to decide if we were going to continue or not. That's because when you try something new for the first time, it's going to be hard and you're going to want to quit. So they want us to stick it out the whole entire season so we could see like where we started and where we ended. And so we weren't able to quit just because it was hard. We had to stick through it. And then we got to decide if we actually enjoyed it or not. And that we we also learned that we got better at it, whether we enjoyed it or not. So when I was younger, that was a really big thing for me to always just explore. And also when I did that, because I was so committed, Like when I wanted to become an archaeologist and dig stuff up. And so I dug up the whole backyard when I (laughs) wanted to be the first female to play in Major League Baseball. I wrote to the president and I joined the boys team when I wanted to be a singer. I and I was like 10 at the time when I was 12. I wanted to be a singer. I was really committed to that. Yet I can't carry a tune. But my parents, they never said you can't. Then they never said you can't. So they put me in singing lessons and I was also in church choir. And then I created a music video and I remember bringing a whole stack. I made a music video. My grandpa was in editing. So he edited with me and I, we made a bunch of copies on VHS and I gave the stack to my mom and I said, can you mail these out? And she's like, what is this? And she looks at it. It's like Virgin Atlantic, all these huge, big record labels. 
And I was like, this was my demo that I'm going to send out so I could be a singer. And that's just how I always was. I was always really like, if I went to go and do something, I, I did it. I never just talked about it. It was just, there was always action behind their words. Well, you know, I, I absolutely adore this story, Gina, because not only were you committed, not only were you putting action behind your words, not only were you all in, but you were all in aiming for the top <laughs> is what I'm yeah. hearing. Because, I mean, there's a big, huge difference between somebody who says, I want to be a singer and they're in the choir and they're here and there and everywhere. And then all of a sudden you're sending in a demo to Virgin, yeah. you know, records. That's a whole other level of all in. So I yeah. just I really want to acknowledge <laughs> that and appreciate that and highlight that for our listeners. Like you listeners, you might think you're all in. And I'm going to I'm going to challenge our listeners right now. I'm going to challenge our listeners and say, are you really? Are you really all in? You know, do you want to be a singer? Are, have you applied to be on The Voice? I have a friend who is convinced that she's going to be on Survivor and she just keeps applying and applying and applying and applying. So listeners, are you all in? So Gina, let's talk about as you went through your childhood with the amazing parents, let's give them five claps yeah. too, who taught you the power of discipline and commitment, but also gave you the world, put the world at your fingertips and said, try whatever you want. As you grew beyond that, what was it that inspired you to keep trying new things? Because I think as children, we do we are encouraged to a certain extent to try a bunch of things. But in general, we are encouraged ultimately to find the one thing or focus on the one thing. And how did you avoid that? <laughs> so, you know, the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. So in the book, he mentions how he, the rich dad told him to get all these different jobs, you know, to learn sales and to do this and to that. And it didn't matter about the money. What mattered was what you were learning. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big learner in life. And I believe that if you want something, you have to go after it. It's not just going to come to you. And if you want to experience something, the only way to experience is, it is by doing it. And we stop ourselves so much with fear. And I've been rejected and I've experienced failure my whole entire life from childhood, you know, and I'm writing to the president and I'm submitting my tapes and not hearing back or, you know, all this stuff. So, and then as I got older, I went into the film business and that's another beast. So I feel like for myself, it was always like, you only get one life and why just put yourself in one box? Why not just explore and try everything that you want to try? Because you can, you can do that. If you have a dream, you can pursue that. You know, if you want to write that book, write that book, what's stopping you? And I don't think that there's anything in my life that would ever want to stop, that's going to stop me from achieving what I wanted, what I want to do. And I thought when I lost my hearing that I was 21 when I lost my hearing and the week before I lost my hearing, I got a job on Dancing with the Stars. No, I'm sorry. The week after I lost my hearing, I got a job on Dancing with the Stars. So I didn't even lose my hearing for a week and I get a job on like the number one reality show on TV and I take the job and it's just for the week. And I had headphones on during, I was with the dancer and the celebrity and one celebrity would be on one ear and then the dancer would be on the other. Cause it was like, they were mic. So one was my left, one was my right. So if anything was going on in my left ear, I couldn't hear. And I'm supposed to be taking notes for the editors because, you know, we have a quick turnaround for these episodes. And I just remember like going home and having to rewatch everything it's like a four hour rehearsal. And I remember I had to rewatch everything to record everything and then switch headphones. So I had to rewatch another four hours because I had a handicap. And I just remember crying and being like, oh my God, this is going to be so hard. And then I remember taking jobs in the industry and having 
a headset in one ear and then people talking to you, you, you do like a one ear headset when you're mm-hmm. on sets. So you have the other ear so you could hear people and then they're talking to you. And I couldn't do both. I couldn't juggle hearing in the ear and then listening to somebody because I didn't have that luxury. I had one ear off. So I just remember being like, this is so, can I ever, can I do this? And then I just have to keep reminding myself and pumping myself up and being like, I can, I can, I can, because your brain is going to give you every logical excuse under the sun to get you to quit because Mm -hmm. it's hard. And what's hard isn't safe. And our brain's job is to keep us safe. So once you get into the struggle, it hits quit. You're done. It's over. You know, just give it up, try something else. And every excuse is valid. Every single excuse is valid. And the goal is to be stronger than your mind. And that's something that's been ingrained and trained in me since a child. And that's all I've ever done. So for me, I've always just loved to explore and experience life in all assets. Yeah, beautiful. Well, you know, so much. It's so your work here, your conversation with me here is so rich. There's so much here. You know, I love this. You adapted, right? You adapted. Yep. Well, can't hear got to figure it out. You had to adapt. And you were committed enough that you were willing to go extra after work to compensate for not hearing while you were at work, Mm -hmm. right? You you didn't make it their problem. You adapted. You adapted. So that's one piece out of that last little segment. And then the other piece is I love that you're affirming that every excuse is valid. I love that because I think a lot of times when an excuse arises within us, those of us who are hyper committed will invalidate the excuse. We'll say, yeah, that's not, I'm going to just roll right over that. So what I'm hearing when you say every excuse is valid, what you're doing is you're affirming that, hmm, yep, that's fact. You're not denying, oh, yeah, can't hear in one ear. You're, you know, that is an, a valid excuse for whatever, you know, your re- requirements for any kind of accommodation or adaptation. However, at the same time, once you have validated yourself and whatever the excuse is, then you make a conscious choice to say, I'm doing it anyway. Right. I love that. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk more. But right now, Wickedly Smart Women, we could use your help. If you are enjoying this show, consider joining our community, making a donation at wickedlysmartwomen.com and sharing with your lovely lady friends that might benefit from our content. Because she benefited from our content, Gina is here speaking to us today and bringing her magic and her gifts and her contributions. So please help a gal out and let your sisters, mothers, daughters, friends, and colleagues know about the show so that we can serve them too. I want to say a huge thank you to all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. We are welcoming now thousands of downloads from all over the world. I want to shout out this week to our listeners in Canada who at the current moment are sending a lot of wildfire smoke in our direction at the moment of this recording. Also to our listeners in New York, which is where Gina is on Long Island, and our listeners in Togo. And we will be right back with Gina Casaza. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by the Wealthy Life Mentor. Women, are you on the edge knowing that life is calling you to make a change? Are you ready to be part of the evolution of what it means to be a wickedly smart woman creating your wealthy life by design, a life that is an extraordinary work of art? Angel B. Hartwell, the Wealthy Life Mentor, is hired by women in transition, Women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance, become clear on the value of their wisdom, and embody a beauty-filled, balanced life of shameless self-expression. Discover your wealthy life readiness by taking the quiz at quiz.wealthylifementor.com.
And we are back with Gina Casaza. You can actually find out more about Gina at discoveromnia.com. Discover Omnia, O M N I A dot com. We'll have that for you in the show notes. And Gina, before we went to the break, we were talking about your, you know, your adaptability, but also your commitment. I want to talk now about how you ended up coming here to the show. You told me when we were in the green room that you started this business and began to look for resources. And so what I'd love to hear about is your business. Tell tell us about your business, what you started, what inspired you to start it. You know, what's the journey been over the last four years of adaptation and commitment and constant learning? Share with us a little bit about that. Yeah. So the business is called Omnia. And so it started from a company called I Am Bracelets that me and my mom did together. And we created aromatherapy crystal bracelets. And each bracelet came with an oil, a selenite wand, and an affirmation card. And the whole purpose of the business was every time you see your bracelet, it rewires your brain to that emotion. So we had abundance, calm, love, joy, uh, confidence. And every time you see your bracelet, touch it. Um, you're hearing that affirmation, I am confident, I am calm. And that's the tool that it uses. So one day my brother was like, why don't you create an NFC charm for the bracelets and create a whole new business and do an NFC charm where they tap it to the, the bracelet, they tap the charm to the phone. and it connects them to your self-care application. And that will give them everything that your bracelet says that it does. So if your bracelet's saying it helps rewire their mindset by looking at it, by saying that affirmation, well, in this self-care app, you're actually going to give them the tools they need to really help ship them into that emotion quickly and easily. And I was like, oh my God, I love that idea. That's amazing. And here's the kicker. When I hear something that's amazing, and I'm gonna gonna emphasize this, when you have an idea, we don't realize the execute, every idea has an execution behind it. And you don't realize the mountain that you're about to climb (laughs) when you get that idea and you decide to go for it. And for me, I don't really think things through. I just think amazing idea, let's go. And that's what I did with my children's book. And that's what I'm doing with this bracelet company. And that's what I seem to do in life. And I don't know if it's working out yet. We'll figure it out. But it's it's been a fun learning experience. So when I decided to do this, it was January of 2021. So last year, last January, 2021. And he mentioned it. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. So I'm... It's the end of January. I'm starting to research and do stuff. We're on a road trip. Me and my mom and my friend Jill cross the country. We're starting in South Carolina and we're going all the way to LA. We're driving cross country together. I'm getting up at four in the morning to take meetings with India, Pakistan, China, all these people that work with NFC technology to find out how I can create this charm. Mm. And everyone's like, you can't do it. It's impossible. You know, so I'm like, you know what? Let me learn something about NFCs. I know nothing. Yeah. I need you to stop one second because I don't know what you're talking about either. And I'm sure our listeners don't. So can you define what NFC means for us? Because I I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. So (laughs) NFC, it's it's a token. So. Oh, NFT? NFT, oh my God, I'm saying the wrong, no, NFC, no, NFC, I'm saying the right thing. I'm like, okay. oh, I have, I have NFTs too, but no, okay. NFC. So NFC is like, it's a chip. So you okay. know, like when you get a, like a QR code, right? Okay. And you yeah. get like a QR code, but this is now a chip. That it's, goes, so it's a tangible thing because an NFT is thing. intangible, yes, but that's an intangible, NFC. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm like, I'm gonna say long. I have those yep. too. No, yep. so the NFCs are chips and they're, they're like little microscopic chips. Right. And they they don't go onto metal, but they can go onto metal. It's very weird. So like you have to have a certain backing for it to get onto the metal. Right. And that was another thing because my NFC, the chip, is really, really small. It's around nine millimeters. 
really, really, really small and hard to read. So when you put another layer on it because of this, because we're attaching it to metal, now it's going to be even harder to read. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, like now, how am I going to create that barrier to make it easier to read for a bulky cell phone case or, you know, what can I do? So I was trying resin. I was trying so many different things. We did 10 attempts. I also had to learn about NFCs. There's different types of NFCs, you know, and I had to study that. I actually ordered the wrong ones the first time. Then I ordered the right ones, but then I didn't get the right size. And it's just a mess of just learning because that's what it is. You know, it's like sometimes people don't, when you're unsure, they can't guide you. Right. So, you know, and, and that's where the learning comes in because here's the thing. It's not about not making a mistake because you're going to make mistakes. That's what's going to happen. Every day I feel like I'm walking on a minefield, just bombs are going off. <laughs> but it's how you handle it. It's how you get through it. It's how you react to it. That's what's important. And also you want to try and make the smallest mistake po possible. So I'm not spending an exorbitant amount of money up front because right. a business is a lot of money up front. So when I started learning about these chips, I then was getting the materials now to create this charm because no one seems to make these charms. So now I have to also be the jewelry maker. Well, you're the so, one. <laughs> yeah. So now we're like a jewelry maker. And my mom helps me. She she makes them as well. So she's the one that designed the bracelets for me and taught me how to make the bracelets and the jewelry. She helped me with putting the charm together. So we were testing it out and everything. So there was a lot of input and help there, which was wonderful. And we finally got it to work. Took four months, 10 attempts, got it. Then I'm like, great, now we got to create this app, but I need content for it. Like, what do I want to give my buyers? So I decided four bracelets. I originally had five, it became too much work. Four bracelets, calm, joy, love, and inspired. The four main emotions that we all want to be in. We all want to be happy. We all want to be in that creative, inspired, fun zone. We all want to uh, be in love and we all want to be calm and in peace, you know? So mm -hmm. I was like, these are great bracelets. So then I said, what kind of content am I going to give everyone? So I thought meditations, because that's my jam, breathing exercises, yeah. journals, motivational tips, and, and then exercises around that theme. I said, that's what I'm going to start with. Eventually I'm going to, and the thing about doing content, you never stop. So we're right. going to do recipes, sleep stories. That's all the, the things, yeah. all the things, <laughs> all the things. So right now it's just, okay, now I got to focus on this. How much are you going to give people? So it ended up being 140 pieces of content. So I built a studio in my house and I then scripted everything, put everything together. I studied breathing. I did, I hired someone to do meditation. It's the only thing I didn't do. And everything else I just learned. I yeah. studied journals, everything. And then I created it. I put it together, took like six months. And then I hired someone to code this for me. And again, when you don't know what you're doing, you're going to make some mistakes. Yeah. And I didn't really research what I wanted. I knew it was a web application, but I had no idea that there's different types of web applications. And this guy did it on WordPress. I hired him overseas because it was cheaper and it was in my budget. And what happened was is... Cheaper, I ended up cheaper became more expensive. It <laughs> became it became that I didn't know. It's always going to be expensive if you hire someone because every single time they do something for you, you have to pay them. Right. And that's important. You know, they're not a part of your business. They're a hire for business. So I so they work for hire. So that was the thing where anytime something happened, I had to keep going back to him and it just kept adding up. Yeah. And eventually so I'm gonna up, I'm gonna stop you. Yeah. Right here, because we're getting close on time. So I yeah. want to just like capture some of this fountain of wisdom that's coming out of you for our yeah. listeners. You know, you got the your brother came with the idea and you were like, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. So sometimes these ideas are going to come and you're going to say, let's go, listener. And you're going to then discover all the things that you didn't know that you didn't know. And that it is the the whole entrepreneurial journey is a gigantic, big ass experiment and learning experience. So the second thing that I 
am hearing is what your business is doing is providing a multi-sensory experience for the users. And this multi-sensory experience is allowing them to have something tangible and beautiful that also is providing them with multiple ways to get to the intended outcome, which is calm, joy, love, or inspired. And then the third thing that I really want to make sure our listeners hear is, and this is what I'm going to call your pearl of wisdom, Gina, is every idea has execution behind it. And from my perspective, because I'm one of, I'm very similar to you. I got the idea and it's like, let's go. And then it's like, holy shit, what the hell did I just get myself into? Right. That's what I do as well. And because now you've done it enough times, you now actually know every idea has execution behind it. And we don't know what that's actually going to look like because we're literally taking something from nothing. We're taking something from nothing and bringing it into reality in just astonishing ways. And so I I just really have to applaud you for all of that, Gina. You've got like 30 seconds left. Yeah. To, oh, so, so I'll quickly wrap it up yeah. in terms of like, I ended up having to learn how to code. So I ended up coding the whole entire application. I had to learn it. And I'm still, we're launching this month, the company, and it's been a whirlwind and I'm excited but I'll tell you one one last tidbit. If I would have knew how hard it was from the idea, I never would have started. This has been a real big journey. So sometimes it's nice when you don't know and you just kind of make mistakes along the way because I'm too far in it to stop. Yeah, too far in it to stop. I remember when I left the real estate industry and stepped into personal and professional development and was going to be, you know, a crystal healer back back in the day, 20 years ago. That's what happened for me. I'm going to be a crystal healer. I had no idea what I was doing. Didn't know what I was talking about. And six months in, I realized I was too far down the road to go back. And I was not far enough down the road to see the fruits of what I had said yes to. So I think if there's anything I want our listeners to take away today is just, you know, stay committed, keep going. It's a learning experience. It's an experiment. And Gina, it has been my absolute pleasure having you here today. I think you and I could spend like hours and hours having a conversation, but we are at the end. So listeners, we do love feedback. Please let us know what you thought of today's episode. Go right now to www.wickedlysmartwomen.com to join our community, share your takeaways, ask questions, or submit guest suggestions. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep your ears open. And remember you are a wonderful woman. Thanks for tuning in, downloading, and listening. Be sure to rate and review Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each new episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.